Recently, I had a, there was a wedding in uh, Mexico where a mayor married an alligator, a crocodile. And when it came to the time of, you know, usually that side, when they declare now your husband and wife, they say you may now kiss your bride. So when it came to that part, they tied the mouth of a crocodile to avoid unnecessary bitings. <laughs> now you can imagine. How about animal rights? That's bestiality. We cannot make human rights take away the right thing. The right thing, according to God, it will be the right thing. Even when you say human rights cannot be replaced by the right thing. The right thing, which is godly, will stand out in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so this is such a statement, I'm indeed thrilled. And uh, the bishops and all of us here present, we are grateful that we are invited to be witnesses. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should all rejoice and celebrate in it. Why don't we give God a mighty hand clap? Because this is the first day of this kind ever since the world was created. And once it passes, it will never come back. We will not have another day when His Excellency and Mama are celebrating 50 years in marriage. This is done. We will be here when they are celebrating maybe 60, before that, there, is, there should be something in between. So to God be the glory. Amen. I want to welcome each and every person here present. There is somebody set aside who will do that work. But each one of you is very important before the Lord. And uh, you are so precious. I want to congratulate on your behalf the groom and the bride, the newest celebrating 50 years. Let us appreciate them. To God be the glory. That's not enough. That's not enough. <laughs> you should call yourself blessed that you are here. How many people would have loved to be here today? How many are really wondering, why is it that I was not invited? But this is the President of the Republic of Uganda and this is Mom of the Nation. If they, uh, they were to invite everybody, how many people would be here? But there are many others who are following. So I want to thank God. Mama, congratulations. Thank you so, so much. We know you as an intercessor, a prayer warrior, an intercessor of the country. And we know you are praying for our president, who is your husband. To God be the glory. And we want to appreciate and congratulate you, Your Excellency, for definitely leading us and when we talk about family, especially now when family is under attack, we are so grateful that you have come out publicly to show the world that we believe in marriage, God is way. And this is very, very important. And the law which was signed to protect the children is an indicative of that. And we are so grateful. I want to thank God for the words that we have spoken in 1099 BC by Samuel after winning many battles. And this is 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. And uh, Samuel took a stone and set between Mizipah and he made a declaration. 
Ebenezer. Thus far, the Lord has brought us. What a wonderful message. Let us clap to the Lord because this is such an appropriate message and text you chose. Thus far the Lord has brought us. What a joy. To God be the glory. As a church, as a body of believers, we are so proud of you. That you are doing this. This is not for your family. It is for the entire nation of Uganda. It is for the entire nation to see and the entire world to know this is what Uganda believes. Actually, we are not here to celebrate them, but to thank God for them. And a statement is made. This is what Uganda believes. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Praise the Lord. It is a testimony. It's a testimony that, yes, there are issues in marriages, but it is possible. They are witnesses. It can be done. Somebody has made it 50 years, others 60 years. Maybe you are 30 years, another one 20 years, maybe 10 years. Whichever you were a testimony, you are witnesses. And we are so grateful that uh, during this time in your marriage, and also our leaders, you have come out so strongly to ensure that the body of Christ, to ensure that Christians and other faith-based organizations, they are supported to promote God's work. That's why here we have our leaders from Interreligious Council of Uganda. Would you please stand up? They are all here. To God be the glory. We are working together and we always appreciate. The family, you are supporting us as a family. You are supporting us, but also you are supporting as a, as a leader, as our president, as mama, first lady. Thank you very much. Would you please appreciate the leaders, these leaders, because they are, we are working together. When we say that this is real blessing. We are saying, at least now, we are strong as religious leaders. Because we have a backing from His Excellency and Mama. They are supporting what we are really supporting. Recently, I had a, there was a wedding in Mexico where a mayor married an alligator. A crocodile. And when it came to the time of, you know, usually that side, when they declare now your husband and wife, they say you may now kiss your bride. So when it came to that part, they tied the mouth of a crocodile to avoid unnecessary bitings. <laughs> now you can imagine. How about animal rights? That's bestiality. We cannot make human rights take away the right thing. The right thing, according to God, it will be the right thing. Even when you say human rights cannot be replaced by the right thing. The right thing, which is godly, will stand out in the name of Jesus. And so this is such a statement, I'm indeed thrilled. And uh, the bishops and all of us here present, we are grateful that we are invited to be witnesses. And this is a message which is being sent to the future, to our children and our children's children, that this is the way. Please follow it. Never depart from it. This is the way to go. Follow it. Our children, 
and our children's children. By the way, when we have celebrations like this one, it's about our children that they see the right thing. They can have a testimony. Our dad did it. Our mommy did it. And grandchildren they can say, ah, Jaja did it. Now we can also follow suit. That's the way to go. And I'm so grateful to God. You know, marriage uh, was instituted by God himself. This is the first institution God put in place. When he started creating, from the beginning, he created man and woman. He created Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. He never created Adam and Steve. He created Adam and Eve. And then he kept on creating he, day one seven times. He, he said, it is good. He created whatever he created day one. It's good. Day two, it's good. The only time in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. It's not good. Then he created Eve. By the way, God is the first surgeon. He put Adam to sleep and removed one rib, which means marriage is between one man and one woman. And he ensured that Adam fulfills the duty. You know, he was created and given responsibility of a priest, a protector, and a provider. Three Ps. A priest, a protector, and a provider for the home. And uh, Eve, what a responsibility. Which responsibility our mama is doing for the nation. We are so, so grateful. It was for companionship. It was for comforting each other. It was for procreation. Procreation, which is uh, uh, very important. Having children, marriage, is so key that it has become a popular debate everywhere. Divorce, not divorce. Well, all over the world. Because once family is attacked, then the world is attacked. Once family is attacked, because family is the birthplace for the nation. Marriage is the birthplace for the church. Birthplace for every, every institution. That's where everything begins from. And so I'm so grateful to you, Excellency and Mama, that we are here to witness what we are witnessing. Let us clap for them. <laughs> but this is very important. When we have anniversaries and you come back to thank God, it's about giving God his position. When you do that, I have an imagination that God is even smiling and say, look at what my children are doing. And once God is appreciated, you leave him with no choice other than pouring his blessings unto you. He doesn't sprinkle, he pours. And that's what he's doing. And we should really appreciate God. You remember in Luke chapter uh, 17, uh, the ten lepers who were healed, kind of, only one who came back. Which means when they came back to Jesus, he said, where are the nine? They never came back. So it means only one was healed. So it is very important to have time to appreciate God because that is the acknowledgement. All blessings come from him. All blessings come from him. I like the psalmist. Psalm, uh, the psalmist who is David in Psalms 103. He says, Pray the Lord my soul and all that within me and forget not his benefits. One of the challenges we have as human beings is to forget. Forgetting, forgetting. So I'm so grateful that you have remembered 
and said this has been God's making. But re listen to this. 50 years, it means 50 years of love for each other. 50 years of parenting. It means 50 years of raising grandchildren as well. I like the way the president calls Abazukuru, the number of Abazukuru. So 50 years of raising grandchildren, but also 50 years of forgiving each other. You know, when you come back to give thanks, this one you say, I need forgiveness. And 50 years of forgiving each other, 50 years of growing together, 50 years of supporting each other, but above all, 50 years of God's faithfulness. 50 years of God's faithfulness to each other. Can you imagine in the 50 years? And God has given you responsibility to be our leaders in the country. Is that a small thing? No. This is something we should thank the Lord for. In the 50 years, leadership, wisdom, understanding, and we must give thanks to God for all this. But also when he says, thus far the Lord has brought us, it means that uh, they are celebrating 50 years, that there was a time where they celebrated one year. You know some people wait to celebrate big, big, and many years. No. Every year there is a celebration. Every year. Like now, the first celebration of one year anniversary. It's called the paper. This is the time people should come and say, ah, when they are still learning each other, when one steps on another, he will say, ah, actually, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. One year is called the paper. How about two? Uh, uh, two years, three years. Very important to help us remember where we have come from. And then you go, you celebrate five years wooden, whereby now marriage is becoming so strong. You go and celebrate uh, 10 years of aluminium. You celebrate uh, 15 years of Christo. Then you celebrate 20 years of, uh, of porcelain. 25 years of silver. Look at that. Every, every time there is something. How about 35 hours, 30 pearl? How about uh, 35 cola? How about 40 ruby? How about 45 sapphire and golden? When you look back, what are you seeing? Don't you see there have been a number of things? Blessings, children, grandchildren, leadership, a number of things God has given us. That is why the, the, the psalmist says, praise the Lord my soul, and all that within me. So that we do not take things on our, in our own strength. But also, it is very important to be living example. Indeed, that is what we are seeing today. Also, to be living example. And also help our children and grandchildren to emulate these examples. But also, renewing your vows, it's about telling others about God's faithfulness and your commitment to each other, which is very, very important. These memories are very important. They help us to appreciate God from whom our blessings flow. Let me ask you this question, all of us here present. Suppose God came here and he posed this question. Now, Marriage, vows, and everything has been dissolved. You are now free to have another choice. Would you give this woman or this man another choice to be your husband or wife? If they say, aha, 
It is resolved. Will you give Kanuni <laughs> another Chisanja? Ask your neighbor there, those who are all in your heart, would you? Probably, probably others would say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> if you cannot give her or him a Chisanja, it means there is a problem that should be put right. It means you should have time to come and confess and say, Lord, I need you. I need you. After all, we, need, we should learn to forgive each other because there's nobody who's perfect. All of us have fallen short of God's glory. That's why you need to put right those things so that you give her or him another chisanja. And that is how you are going to show others that there is God. Finally, we want to pray for you that you continue being examples to others and all of us, to the children and to the grandchildren, but above all to the nation because we are following you, we are praying for you, and all of us as leaders. And let me invite the nation, let us learn to support one another, and pray for one another. And the best thing I have seen in this journey, which uh, Mama Margaret and I were celebrating 40 years soon, the issue of praying together is very important. The issue of reading God's word together. The issue of confessing to each other and say, I'm sorry, it is hard for many, though. But uh, when you do it, you don't need to pay any cost. There is peace and freedom. And Christ being at the center in your marriage. For the revivalists, prayer, confession, and reading God's word is very, very important. Let us learn to forgive one another because... Nobody is perfect. Philippians chapter 1, verse 16. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine for you, all making request with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he who started a good work in you, will perform it until the end. That's our prayer, that the one who started this marriage will complete it and complete well, and all of us. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.